Hello guys, Colossus here for Grinderschool.com. I'm playing another Full Ring Microstakes video. I did one earlier this month, I think, or uh, last month. And I got some positive comments on the uh, multi-tabling and uh, getting into a lot of spots. Uh, one negative comment about the, uh, the video was that uh, people don't see showdowns and don't actually see results. So um, today I'm gonna uh, do some uh, poker tracker analysis after this session. Currently I'm playing about 10 tables. Uh, here I iso raise the standard ace high flop, a standard c but we definitely have equity with the gut shot, so uh, pretty standard. And a pretty standard fold from uh, the villain. Uh, I have some tables on the other screen. I will insert them here. There we go. Uh, Jack Deuce, we got a free look. I'm definitely gonna uh, dunk it out here with the gut shot and top pair. And here, the guy is too short to ice race. Uh, he's got like 20 big blinds. I'm not gonna uh, ice race him. I'm definitely betting here again with top pair and uh, flash draw. And now, this is uh, now I'm not gonna bet again. There is like no value in betting. Uh, if he calls, I'm beat. Um, He's betting like half pot. I'm definitely calling him. Uh, oh, I'm misclick. Oops. Wait. Oh, very nice, Colossus. Very nice. Yeah, I'm not used to playing on full tilt, so uh, that was uh, that was stupid. Uh, ah, I could stop the video, but anyway, <laughs> come on. No. Uh, okay, that was purely a misclick. That was. Uh, it was actually a call. Anyway, uh, so uh, I'm playing 10 tables now, and I know that a lot of members, I'm reading the Grinder School forums uh, quite heavily, like every, at least every day I check them. And I know that uh, quite a few members are playing the 2 and all, 10 and all, uh, 5 and all uh, full ring games. Uh, here we've got a min race from a super nit. I'm just gonna fold. I'm just gonna get myself into trouble with ace x against the nits out of position. Because when you flop your ace uh, and he puts in uh, money, uh, you're gonna be beat. Uh, you're gonna be dominated. And if an ace flops and he doesn't have an ace, I mean, you're not gonna squeeze out a lot of money out of him. So, it was, uh, I know it was only one big blind, but you're this. It may seem like a small mistake to call one big blind pre-flop, but you're gonna make big mistakes uh, post-flop uh, by uh, doing the small mistake pre-flop. So just to avoid these kind of spots, uh, just uh, fold your hand and continue to the next one. Here, standard isolation, uh, cut off limbs, and uh, I'm gonna make it five x from the button. Uh, you can make it four x and uh, probably get the same results here. A standard raise with pocket sevens, raising uh, almost every pocket pair from any position except maybe deuces until fives from under the gun uh, it's gonna be kinda iffy if the table is really aggressive but here at 2 and all, 5 and all, 10 and all um, people are not like 3 betting heavily so when you get 3 bet people really have like aces kings and ace king uh, you can really narrow down their range just because they are not 3 betting a lot for instance if I if I were to 3 bet uh, this guy who raises 4x under the gun, my hand is like face up. I mean, all, people here only do this with. Uh, uh, I'm gonna ice raise here though, uh, and I'm gonna make it quite big. Standard raise with queens. Um, the previous hand I was ice raising uh, 9 10. Uh, I was checking uh, people's stack sizes before I ice raise something you should always uh, keep in mind. And I was also checking stats. <coughs> I know it may uh, this all may seem like really fast. This is like uh, did I raise this preflop? I think so. Uh, this is like the worst. Uh, I'm not gonna see bet this, and I timed out. And this I'm gonna see bet. I really draw heavy. I'm just falling. I have to uh, play a little bit faster and not. I cannot talk too much about hands. Um, <clears throat> I can add in one more table. I think.
here I'm just gonna fold against the four people. I'm not gonna sc uh, screw around on that flop. Okay, there we go. Just added in another table. The thing is, when you're playing these stakes, these micro stakes, the full ring uh, games, you can you can make a decent profit. Actually, I know there's a guy on the two plus two forums, and actually I know him because he's from my uh, he's from my country, he's from Belgium. Um, maybe you've guys read about him. And in January, I think he played one million hands full ring at two and L. And actually, I think he made like. 3k or something I don't I don't know exactly uh, here uh, I'm gonna 3 bet this is like pretty s nice flop and uh, pretty nice pot uh, to, to 3 bet as a bluff although the guy in the small blind was kind of short stack well he was not short stacked he had like uh, 50 big blinds so that was my that's my only concern there uh, to 3 bet And actually, we get a uh, sweet flop. Uh, so we did get called by the guy who I, I, I was doubting about uh, to three bet because he kind of has calling stations uh, stats here. Uh, I've got I'm just gonna fold uh, against the three bet here. Iso raise on the button with eight queens suited, pretty standards. So people, if you have any questions about the pre-flop or the post-flop, because I'm really rushing through the hands now. Put the uh, go to the forums, put the timestamp in, and uh, ask me anything. And uh, as I said, I'm checking the forums uh, daily, so this is like the worst flop uh, ever. He limp called, and uh, so this smacks his range here. I'm just gonna fall my oh, misclick again. I don't know what I folded, but I think uh, it was a post flop hand <laughs> where I was not supposed to fold. Uh, anyway, um, these misclicks are going to happen when you multi table, but um, the, f the problem here is I'm stacking tables, and so the buttons all fit uh, over each other. Uh, if you're multi tabling and you have like a smaller screen, you cannot tile the tables without a big overlap. Uh, I suggest you choose the the cascade uh, option, which make the tables really uh, quite big, and uh, the buttons are. Uh, not overlapping each other, so when you're clicking on one table, uh, you can never uh, do a misclick on another table, if that makes any sense. Uh, King 10, uh, in the cutoff, we've got two limpers. I'm gonna ice raise. My hand is too good, uh, just uh, not to uh, ice raise. These are pretty standard faults. So what I was talking about this guy on the two plus two forms, and we've got a top pair hand against the. This is uh, this is actually uh, quite a tricky. Um, the guy limp calls, and the flop comes king deuce nine. I don't think he has anything, but if I bet, he's gonna fold, and if I bet and he calls, I'm gonna be pretty much beaten. So I'm gonna check that behind. <coughs> this is and you can definitely see bet there if you're not comfortable playing post flop, but against the nits. I'm I'm not gonna squeeze out a lot of money against him unless I'm uh, pretty much beat. And now he bets like ten, uh, forty cents. I'm definitely I'm just gonna call here. I'm not afraid of the flush uh, coming in. I have the ten high flush. I'm just trying to squeeze out a little bit more money. And now he checks. So I'm pretty much pretty sure that I'm good. And I'm gonna make it like a small value bet so that he still calls with some crap. Um, I hope I can get back to the hand. I didn't. Notice the name of Philin, but uh, we'll see if my analysis uh, was right or wrong. Uh, in this game, it's not about winning uh, a lot of pots. It's all about squeezing. Either again, Red Pepper is playing 8-0. He's never gonna call me on this flop unless he has like a worse ace, which I don't see him having a lot. So I'm just gonna check this behind. In this game, it's all about winning, squeezing out a lot of money from your opponents, and not winning, taking down pots. So. Now I'm 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 dead. I have to bet like something now. Just 
so was this the guy no I'm trying to look for but anyway I will do a poker tracker analysis uh, after this session so don't worry guys and uh, you will definitely I think it was this flop so, and I think ace queen yeah no this was the ace queen hand I'm just gonna continue playing and not look at results for now uh, we'll see the results uh, afterwards is Jack a uh, limper under the gun? Uh, I'm gonna ice race. This range is heavily weighted towards uh, small pocket pairs. Five six suited on the button, uh, on in the cutoff. Uh, I'm raising it up. I'm checking its stack sizes and uh, they are all fine. So, which, which I mean, they are all fine. There are no like short stacks uh, in the blinds who are going to push over your five six suited, which is gonna be you cannot call it six six high and. Uh, Pretty much, uh, it pretty much always is uh, sucks to have a raise like five six suits and then to notice there is a, a short stack pushing uh, push bots uh, in the blinds and to have to fold your uh, six high and if you were paying attention you would have not raised it up so always uh, always check uh, stack sizes and uh, against four people here I'm um, definitely seeing every top pair second best kicker. Is queen suited? We're getting some nice hands here. Five nine suited. Uh, I'm checking stack sizes. Stack sizes are good. Um, guy on the button is a, is, is a net. Um, multi tabling also because I've seen his name on several tables. So I'm gonna raise a really loose raise nine five suited uh, there. And we actually get called by the net. And the flop comes pretty good, uh, which I mean. The flop is really dry, so I can take it down with the seabed, and we have some equity with because another five or another nine would be uh, pretty sweet. Ace jack offsuit. I'm actually gonna fold under the count. Uh, not good enough. And here uh, against one person, I'm seabedding uh, here. Uh, we can uh, barrel a lot of cards uh, there when he calls us because he's calling us with like small pocket pairs quite often there. If you cannot follow the hands when I'm talking about, I was talking about uh, the pair board here, for instance. This, for instance, is a card I can uh, definitely uh, barrel, uh, which I'm going to do. Uh, you can definitely check it to him too, and uh, because I think you're gonna get uh, either a lot of faults, and if you get raised, uh, you're gonna be in uh, some pretty tough spots. But I think you lose uh, too much value by not betting there. I don't know if the people at Ten and I'll think as far, but because that was like the best bluffing card for me to come out. Of course, I have the ace in this case. In this case, I had the ace. But what is happening here? Um, of course, I had the ace. So I, I was thinking like he knows that this is a really good bluffing card, and here somebody limps in uh, from the small blind into my big blind, a standard uh, raise with almost any two cards, um, and a standard fold by him. He uh, seems like the weak tight 15-0 guy. So pocket trees, for instance, this you can fold under the gun, um, depending on uh, table dynamics. Um, you're gonna get three bet quite often, and um, you're gonna have to fold uh, your pocket trees. Karma. Uh, here, I didn't want to raise ace nine uh, absolute out of position against the short stack who limped in. Of course, the flop comes ace nine. Uh, queen ten suited, really nice hand. I like to play it, but we're, we are under the gun, and from uh, the first three positions, we're gonna play really tight. Here, pocket sixes, we're gonna get a really nice price uh, to set line, so definitely uh, limping in from uh, the blind. Uh, we missed our set, and we're uh, not gonna uh, screw around any further. We're just multi tabling the micro stakes full ring games, and we are going. We're playing uh, standard uh, taggy style. Here, I'm not gonna raise a uh, 6-3 offset from the button, uh, especially with an all-in addict and a short stack. Uh, you know, I already know what's going to happen if I raise my button there. All you guys know uh, what's going to happen. I think even poker stars. I don't know. I think I heard that poker stars uh, switched, well, cancelled the shallow tables. I don't know if it's true, uh, I haven't checked it yet, but 
finally they got their uh, act together at stars and they kicked out all the short stackers or I don't know exactly what I did I have to check it before I'm here uh, 3 8 suited I'm just gonna raise my button and, and play post flop um, I'm quite confident in my post flop game um, so if you're quite confident in your post flop game and you feel like you have an edge against people uh, you can definitely open up a little bit more hands we get called and, and a very good squeeze by uh, this guy Actually, he has really he has good stats. I have like 137 hands, so he's probably a regular. Uh, good squeeze by him. Good game. All standard faults. Here we got a free look with the pocket trees. So we fly nothing. Uh, queen seven. We've got uh, somebody. Oh, I have 200 hands on 18-6, So his range is like heavily weighted towards like. Users. Suited connectors, uh, small pocket pairs, um, something that he limp calls with but uh, doesn't want to get 3 bet with. Um, so we uh, are going to isolate him because he's gonna have to fold on so many flops. Uh, that's gonna make a. Uh, that you're gonna make a immediately profit uh, by iso raising uh, pretty wide there. Here uh, I get 3 bet, but and the 3 bet is by a guy who's playing A2, so his range is like pff, aces or kings. But I mean, I cannot fold. Uh, I mean, if I flop like two pair trips uh, flush, uh, I'm gonna get his stack. And here I'm just gonna fold, uh, give up against the guy who's playing like only aces and kings. Uh, pocket fours. I'm not gonna ice raise. I'm gonna limp in. Uh, I saw immediately that there were some short stacks. Um, so I'm definitely not ice raising there with my pocket fours. And here I made the mistake of not uh, betting. Um, I have to bet now. Um, it's, I made a mistake here. I should have seen that. Um, so anyway, I was again talking about this uh, guy from Two Plus Two, and he did. He played one million hands. Yes, and I'm not kidding. One million hands in one month at the full ring. Um, full ring two and all stakes. I think yes, five and all or two and all. Uh, two and all stakes, and he played one million hands. And um, you can actually check this two plus two uh, thread if you want. Um, he's from Belgium. He's from the same country as me, and he did this to prove that. Uh, Poker is all about skill and not luck because here in Belgium, the country where I'm from, they're trying to legalize poker, uh, which kind of sucks for us because they are uh, poker star is going to uh, quit their business here in Belgium. Probably food that will follow, and we're gonna get yeah like the pretty much the same problem like uh, they did with France or Italy or uh, Washington in the United States, I think. Which basically is uh, yeah pretty crappy for me, but anyway he uh, played one million hands at two and all full ring games. His uh, three bet percent uh, his stats are completely. He made a lot of profit. I think he made uh, like two k, three k in one month playing these stakes. So which is kind of funny. Uh, of course one million hands. Uh, it's uh, incredible what this guy is doing. He's quite famous on the two plus two forums for uh, his multi tabling skills. Here, this guy, I was waiting for his limp uh, just so I could raise him up. People are so predictable. Oh wow, a limp call. Um, I'm definitely seeing this flop. We've got some uh, equity with the bank doors, uh, for flush and back door straights. And his limp call was pretty weak. We've got uh, quite a decent of barreling cards, like any heart, any, I'm talking about uh, previous hand, you know, any heart, any, uh, a card above 10 was actually pretty good against somebody limping in from small vines. They still don't get it, I'm gonna raise them. Pretty standard faults now. So what I was trying to say is that 
at these stakes when a guy can play one million hands and make decent profits you can really multi table and play quite robotically like I'm doing actually now I'm not really f uh, of course I'm thinking but mostly it's experience of course and here for instance the guy is short I immediately notice the stack size I know that there is a short uh, quite a short stack in in the small blind I'm gonna raise it up a little bit I don't have to raise it really big and uh, the guy is too short and I don't want to get uh, committed to the hand post flop uh, when uh, I see but then I get called I want to have some options uh, post flop and like for instance now I'm just gonna give up when I, I, I mean there's nothing else I can do um, He's too short. Uh, here with the 6 3, this guy limped in, I guess. He's, um, I'm actually gonna uh, dunk into him. Uh, Jack Queen, uh, I'm just gonna raise. 9 plan through that. Uh, I could 3 bet here, but again, the guy is really short. Uh, I expected to get called here. Um, I was expected to get called by quite uh, a lot of hands. I'm gonna bet once more and uh, check. Uh, Check my uh, river option and see uh, what he does. The guy is quite needy and he limped in from early position, so I think uh, his range is like heavily weighted to like um, smaller pocket pairs, uh, six, seven kind of type of hands. Um, uh, bing, 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 easy squeeze. Uh, we've got some short stack. This makes it interesting. I'm gonna. Uh, Squeeze, but I'm gonna leave him. If he shoves over me, I want to get uh, like a reshove. If you know what I mean. Um, my raise cannot be so big that when he uh, re-raises, that I can only call with the other guy in between. If you know, if you guys, that makes any sense. Uh, if you don't get it, uh, please uh, post in the forms and I'll talk about it. And now we're just gonna put them all in. There's nothing else we can do. 251, let's make it 250, exactly his, uh, exactly his uh, stack. Nope, guys, you don't see the results, but apparently he folded because it's this guy. And now he limps and... Oh, I hate shorties, I really do. I'm gonna uh, ice risk smallish because again for the same uh, reason uh, I stated before. Here um, we're from the small blind, uh, but the raise is like a min raise. So I'm definitely gonna. Uh, he, he's got a decent stack. Um, I'm I'm willing to see the flop there. Uh, I I still raised here. I'm gonna do the small C bet like 15 to 90 cents. It doesn't matter. Uh, eight queen off. Um, it's gonna be um, pretty loose, and I'm already playing 30 27 there. So uh, we get uh, we get calls. It's kind of sucks. Uh, we're just gonna check and hope to hit uh, our gut shot. And bing. Good colossals. You run like gods. I don't know. Uh, we're just gonna put them all in again. Uh, here we have an easy fold, easy fold, easy fold, easy fold. This is the fun thing about playing full ring. Uh, we stacked him apparently. Let's see what he had. He had uh, King 3. That's unfortunate for him. Limb calls King 3 suited. But that's the power of position. I can take 3 cards. Uh, pocket 8 is uh, easy fold. Uh, some guy of this is really crappy shove. It's way, he's way too deep to be open shoving there. Even against the limp, he's risking like way too much um, to win like uh, two and a half big lines. But you can see, uh, like for instance, you can uh, tag the bad players easily, uh, like this guy, Aki okay, Albati, uh, that's the one. Like instant uh, check the stats of like this guy is a super mint. 
Uh, then Jack, this was a pretty loose open. I was, uh, I wanted to mention this. The flop comes really dry, uh, and I have a lot of uh, barreling options. Even like an, uh, a a Broadway card comes off, I'm definitely gonna barrel it. We get like raised by a guy who's playing 19-3. I'm not gonna, uh, yeah, uh, screw around uh, this guy. He never raises, and when people who are passive pre-flop, uh, usually they are. Uh, really passive post flop. So. Ace 10, we've got some limping. I'm looking at his stats. He's, uh, okay, let's talk about this uh, later on. It's a pretty. It's actually a pretty standard race, but uh, it's actually it was an interesting uh, situation to talk about. Like for instance, the reason why would you, well, think about it in the, in that situation? Well, I will talk about it after the session. Um, why it was a quite interesting situation. Here, ten queen. Uh, this guy, I, I know I'm from the small blind, but this guy is so loose. Uh, he might limp fold quite often. I think he's gonna call me with worse hands, and this is the biggest reason why I'm gonna. Uh, it's for value. I'm not bluffing there. Uh, it's purely for value. Here, uh, I'm not gonna call with uh, pocket fives. He's not full stacked. He's a nit. Uh, he's from the cutoff. His race is gonna be pretty wide. Uh, I don't see a lot of, uh, I don't see a lot of uh, good coming from here. We're gonna definitely need to squeeze. Uh, we are like eight, four times. Uh, you don't have to push it because three betting at these stakes um, actually puts your hands uh, quite face up because. People are only tribbling aces, kings, and ace king, pretty much. Unless you have some uh, good regular. His range will be a little bit wider. <laughs> this is interesting. An 11 10, and guys, please don't shove it in here. Uh, if he's bluffing, uh, so be it. Um, um, you can call here, and even calling here is iffy. If you're, um, I have to hurry because I hear a lot of beeps. Uh, this is a decent flop. Standard C bets. I'm pretty. I'm pretty much stacking off uh, there. Well, uh, it depends. Uh, I have to check uh, the stats of the people. Ah, uh, okay. So this guy three bets. Uh, flop comes. I'm gonna call him once, and um, I'm gonna shut down. And this uh, he only called. Um, I have to bet again. I mean, there's. And I'm probably stacking off. So now he checks. So I think my hand is pretty uh, good here. Uh, I'm gonna bet here um, just to protect my hand. And I'm gonna uh, three bet uh, the queens there. You can definitely go. Ah, we get raised, and this is yeah. Ah, it sucks. We're gonna have to seven nine got there. Um, he might easily have an eight. Um, Okay, I'm gonna put them in, but uh, oh, and here too. Ugh. Uh, this is actually an easy fold here. Um, I'm just gonna fold. I'm not gonna call it off with jacks. Oh, and um, that was there. Let's click somewhere. Well, where did I misclick? And actually, I was good with the kings apparently. Let's check it. Queens, eight, six. Oh, wow. Oh my god, I run so good. Check it out, guys. Check it out. I hit my 12. Check it out. Anyway, um, as I said, uh, when you get raised later, please fold. I, I called because the money, I don't care about the money. Uh, but it's like uh, at these stakes when like a regular guys like this guy, for instance, Mika 0476, uh, 187, uh, regular 200 hands I have on him. When he raises you on the turn and the board is paired, it's like the nuts uh, every single time. Here, easy fault. Um, 
when you get three bets like I had with the jacks, you can even I said it pre-flop, even the call is iffy. Because your your jacks are no good against this three bet uh, range. Uh, not at all. I mean they look good, you are on the button, but you are yeah, I mean it's not necessary. Your your money is going to come from like this guy. Uh, uh definitely see an ace high flop with the gut shot and a oh god damn it. I have to stop talking and uh, playing a little bit more. Okay, um, I'm gonna play for uh, six more minutes, I think. Uh, here now we have showdown value. Uh, not a lot. Um, I'm just gonna check this behind now. And hope to uh, get to free shot. If I get bet into, uh, we have an easy fault. Uh, we're just gonna check a yeah, weak ace X, yeah. <coughs> Quite surprising that he calls there uh, from the small blind with ace three offsuit after my button raise. Please, guys, don't do it. I think uh, he made a mistake. His stats were quite needy though. He was like 15, 12. Yeah, this guy. I'm quite surprised uh, he called with uh, ace three offsuit uh, from the small blind against my button raise. Really, because he's never gonna make a lot of money uh, by calling there. Uh, on the contrary, he's gonna lose uh, money uh, by calling there. But. Uh, it's not because they have nice, nice looking stats uh, that they are good players. Uh, everybody can uh, buy a preflop or just download a preflop uh, hand chart, but apparently he's not even following it because I don't think a lot of hand cards uh, suggest calling with ace 3 offsuit from small minds. Uh, here uh, I raised an uh, easy c bet, uh, really uh, kind of the best flop uh, you could hope for to see bet. If we get called, uh, I'm shutting down. Like your money is going to come from Ram Kuden here, guys, with like uh, 70 big blinds and like yeah, calling stationish stats. Uh, you will find them quite often uh, at these stakes. Then you have the super needy guys, um, like for instance, oh, they already purple tagged. Oh, oh, this is a pretty needy table. Why well, five deuce? Playing 4-4, four, four. <laughs> it's funny. Um, I just I didn't do but like for instance these guys these are like uh, these are all like your ATMs and these things like this guy probably too. I mean I'm not gonna gonna be purple tagging them all because I'm gonna be busy quite a while here 26-3. Uh, I mean these are the typical. Where the money is going to come from here? Um, let me see. Who raised it? Twenty eighteen. Quite loose. We got a super donkey. Two donkeys calling. I'm gonna ice race uh, for the donkeys. They're definitely calling a three bet there uh, with worse hands. If the if they were like all nitty, I would uh, I would I would three bet because I have uh, I have a folding equity. Uh, okay, and we've got the min raise pre flop and then the uh, three bet. This is like aces kings. Uh, I'm not putting any more money in there, for sure. And it's actually a pretty bad play by him. Uh, your standard C bets could definitely check behind. If I was if I was playing versus one opponent, but I saw that there were two in the hands, I would definitely check behind just because I'm only gonna get called by hands that beat me and. Uh, Actually, I'm not feeling comfortable uh, getting called by a 19-1 guy, so I'm just gonna check this behind. There were no draws, so I'm I'm barely if ever good. And when he pots it here, uh, a 19-1 guy, a super nit, uh, you can easily fold. He got there like uh, with a set or something, and he really wants to jam uh, or some uh, two pair type of hand. Like uh, I had eight when you have like almost 100 hands and he never raises and then suddenly he starts betting uh, pot uh, post flop. Here I'm gonna call the guy uh, just because he's really he's terrible. <laughs> I don't have to give any explanation uh, about this. Uh, I'm gonna call him because he's terrible. Okay, um, uh, and whoa, he hit the nuts again. Damn. And I'm gonna raise him. 
not really afraid of the flush. I just hope the flush doesn't come in because it's going to scare him. I'm probably uh, never falling. Uh, I think he had 50 big blinds. Well, maybe I can find a fault if he likes. If another heart comes off and uh, he jams it in. Uh, it's 9 of suits. It's kind of iffy. I'm checking set size. Actually, I can fault a 9 of suit there. Eight queen. Uh, calling station call us, which was uh, the problem of raising a nine off to dry flop. Uh, easy C button doesn't have to be big. Ah, uh, we got called. Actually, the king has a good barreling card. The problem is we just, we we stuck with the calling station. Uh, Fault to continuation, but was 100%. So I'm just gonna check behind. He's not falling a queen anyway. So. And now he <laughs> pots it. These guys are funny. Ah, uh, pocket threes. You can fault, you can raise. I'm checking if there are any freaking three betters, but the, this table is so nitty. I'm just gonna raise it up. I'm just uh, raising it up there uh, to take down the blinds on one hand. I mean, the tables are really so nitty. That one table was really nitty. Uh, this is a great option. We have it looks like super calling station in the blinds. We have kings. Uh, you should already oh we got like min dunked into. I'm just gonna make like a smallish race. Uh well the flop is pretty I don't want a nine or a ten to come off of course so I'm gonna make it more bigger. I'm just gonna fold. I didn't put any money in pre flop so no uh, and of course uh, uh I'm not falling. Not for forty cents. If he if he shoves it in now, ugh. okay, let's call. I mean, I'm not falling. I think he's pot controlling. Yeah, he did a pretty good job. Of course, I cannot raise because I mean, he's. I mean, there's no point in. Oh, god damn it! He's clean again. It's just because I'm talking too much and not playing enough. Because. Uh, if you're like focused, you can play like quite a lot of tables like this, and you you're gonna rack up some nice uh, rake back like uh, playing like this, uh, or some FPPs. And it's gonna add up a nice amount to your win rates, which should already be significantly high at these stakes. Okay, as promised. Um, I'm gonna do some uh, poker tracker uh, review, uh, so I'm gonna pause this video for a minute and I'll be back uh, really soon. Okay, see you guys. Okay, guys, I'm back and I've selected some hands to go over with with you, uh, some basic concepts uh, which maybe I was not explaining clearly during this session uh, due to the number of tables. Uh, here uh, we have 9 jack. Um, you might remember the hand. A uh, guy limps in uh, ISO raising, but uh, what I want to talk about is uh, the size of the ISO raise. You've seen me ISO raising to like 6x, 5x, and now ISO raise to 4x. The reason is the guy is like two, uh, has only like uh, 25 big blinds. And if I ISO raise to like uh, 6x, I have to see that bigger also. And when I hit like, let's say, uh, deuce nine uh, king flop, and I see bet, well, I would, I would actually, I would check behind on that flop. I would not see bet. But anyway, uh, what, what, what I'm trying to compl accomplish is, is like ice race cheaply, so I can see bet cheaply and not make myself committed to the hand. If we compare this, um, <clears throat> uh, let's compare it to. Another hand where I isolate yes, for instance. It doesn't matter. Don't look at the strength of your hand, but you can see here um, that we have the blinds here. A uh, guy limps in. We have actually two limpers, uh, a nit who's playing eight zero and a donkey, a uh, half stack donkey playing sixty five zero. Uh, here you can see that my uh, rate size is uh, like sixty, and the only reason is because. The guys have bigger stacks. I can put a lot more pressure on them in position post flop when there's more money behind. And I'm I'm not I'm I'm not committing myself to the hand, but 
I'm allowing myself to have to put a lot more pressure and to make them fold when I miss. And this is this is just something I wanted to point out. I know people saying like, "Oh, you have to uh, always raise the same size to disguise your hand." No, you're not. You are not raising to disguise your hand. You're raising because you want to put yourself in the most plus EV position post flop. And if that's by raising six x or it's by raising three x, it doesn't matter. Uh, you just have to look at people's stack sizes, people tendencies, and make your uh, race depending on this. And and less uh, <clears throat> less like oh, uh, one limper, three uh, x plus one or four x plus one limper is five x. Blah blah blah. Uh, just look at. <clears throat> Look, there are, uh, are uh, for sure uh, more factors to consider, so I just want to point this out. Let's continue. Which other hand I select? That. Let's take a look. Mm, this is the oh yes, the jack jack hand. If I remember well, where we lost half a stack, but I'm sure um, we actually won half a stack by not uh, losing more. So instead, uh, easy uh, race from the button. Uh, we get three bets. The guy is playing 11-10. So 11-10 uh, means like nit nit nit, and it's a decent sample size, 188 hands. Uh, we can check his three bet size will probably be like okay. Let's check. I like one or two percent three betting. Oh god, I cannot. stupid Camtasia. Three bending four percent, so he's only raising like ten percent, and then even from that range, he's like only three bending four percent. So you can imagine like four percent is like aces, kings, ace, king. That's like two percent, three percent, and maybe queen. Sima is three bending. So like, yeah, I mean like his range is really tight. So when he's three bending here, my jacks against his range are really bad. So I, like I told in the session, uh, you can definitely fold this uh, pre-flop. Yes, and I said fold. I know some guys are going to to say, come on, how can you fold jacks uh, against the three bet from the blinds on the button? But so be it. I fold him once because I think his bet is quite weak, and um, either he has like aces. <laughs> Uh, kings, it, it doesn't seem. Uh, actually, I'm putting him on aces because kings is still going a bit bigger. Um, <clears throat> I call and he checks behind, and uh, once he checks behind, I think okay, maybe he has ace king, and I could definitely check it this behind. Actually, when I'm thinking about this, actually, let's consider checking behind here. Okay, we are giving him a free two outer, but we are also going to. Go to show the old. Let me check. We're gonna have to call a pretty river, big river bet though, if we are gonna check behind on the turn. And what are we going to do against the river bet? Depending on let's. Uh, of course, now we have like a fold. I know it's it's only we only have to call like. Uh, what is it? Maybe where, we only have to call like three. 340 to make um oh actually this night the odds are here um uh, we're getting almost five to one um, to make this call yeah is this correct how is this possible was he deeper in the beginning of the hand no I was so uh, okay so that explains where the why I have more money in my stack behind. <coughs> so actually we can discuss this more in the forums or whether it's would be more profitable to check behind but I mean when us once he uh, ships on the turn I mean his uh, range is like uh, we're not good uh, for sure. But I'm considering whether to. I have to think about it myself. I think if you check behind on, you can call any decent sized river bet, unless it's like when it really pots it. Yeah, then we cannot call with the jacks. Especially when an ace king or queen comes off, we definitely can't call. 
But yeah, checking behind might actually uh, be an option there. Oh, we can discuss this further in the forums. I'm gonna continue because the video is getting too long otherwise. Um, you see, when you're when you're when you're analyzing your own uh, sessions afterwards, uh, you can you, you can actually uh, question yourself about some stuff here. Oh yes, uh, I just want to point out our race king queen uh, of suit and it uh, like calls uh, standard and I make a mistake here. There was some side. Uh, I, this I would just want to point. I bet it's 60 cents into pot of two. 26. This is obviously a mistake, and Helen Owen actually had the odds uh, to call me there. Uh, so I made a mistake here with the side pot, uh, not paying attention. It will happen when you multi table. Uh, next, um, what is this now? And you already had this one. What is this one? Oh yes. So let me check this. Oh yes, 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 yes. Okay, I'll check it out, guys. I uh, notice now you can definitely make a note. Uh, Guy Limpson, uh, he's a regular. I don't know why his stats are not coming up here. Maybe I should. Why is his stats not coming up? But uh, he's like a, a 15 5 net or something. Anyway, uh, he limp calls is Jack. When you see this kind of stuff, definitely make a note of it because I expect people. He's in quite late position and he's not even raising uh, his jack off suit so when he raises he, he was playing like 15-5 so he's raising 5% so he's raising like aces kings ace king and that's well it uh, well and ace queen and queens and jacks so he's raising 5% uh, so when these guys are definitely making note of this because when they show strength pre-flop uh, you better believe them um, and I don't think he even bets the river, so he's really in it post flop and, and it's uh, post flop and pre flop. So be aware of these guys and uh, don't uh, get involved big pots with them unless you have uh, the nuts. Ace King, what one I like to say about this one? Some guy limps under the gun, no, uh, raises under the gun plus one, and I might. I make ah yes. I just wanted to do, uh, notice the uh, three bet sizing. I want to three bet size. Um, not too much, so that when the short stack shoves over, I can reshove with this guy in between. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the screen. This guy in between, because if I raise to like two and he reshoves, he doesn't reshove a complete bet into me, and it makes it impossible for me to uh, re-raise with this guy in between. And I don't want to go to the uh, to the flop uh, with Ace King uh, three-handed there. So okay, that's it about this one. I have one more hand to talk about. Oh yes, uh, maybe you had some question about my three bet here. Uh, guy raises on the button. He's pretty tight. Twenty two six. Okay. Uh, uh, only eighteen hands though. Uh, so this is like a hand you can. I don't mind if you fold it. Uh, you can squeeze it. It's eight ten offsuit. The profitable thing about squeezing here is that you're gonna you cannot get a lot of folds. And uh, even if the calling station um, calls, uh, of um, you can take it down post flop with even you don't have to bet like my bet was like 130 on the 2 230 pot and uh, we got an insta fold um, on a flop that uh, actually doesn't hit my uh, 3 bet range but anyway uh, he doesn't know this uh, he does not think about this so that's what calls for uh, for uh, this video for crime school uh, if you have any questions please post them in the forums and I'll get to them as soon as possible see you guys